Welcome to the U World Order Showcase Podcast. Your host, Jill Hart, the coach's alchemist. Couldn't be more excited to have you join us today. On this podcast, we celebrate the champions of change, the up and coming life, health and transformational coaches who are fearlessly stepping forward to make a difference in the world. Get ready for inspiring stories, practical tips, and powerful moments that will motivate you to make a positive change in your life and those around you. We're happy to have you join us on this incredible journey as we dive into the world of life, health, and transformational coaches who are lighting up the path towards a better tomorrow. Hi, and welcome to the U World Order Showcase podcast. Today, we are speaking with Julie Wass, who is a high-performance coach helping midlife women get set for a best second half of their lives. And Julie is like the living inspiration for us to follow because she is doing just that. She is, she's a multifaceted, not entrepreneur, but she's just a multifaceted woman. (laughs) She's got her hand in a couple of different things that are really interesting and and so diverse. Welcome, Julie. It's so nice to have you with us today. Nice to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Um, So tell us your story. I know you're an attorney and you're a professional artist. Is that your piece in the background? No, it's not actually. (laughs) move away from my computer so that I won't be distracted by the computer. No, it's it's actually somebody else's wonderful piece. So I, I actually um, put up on the walls of my house that that's that are mine. I have some paintings that I just, you know, finished that are sitting on the floor. But um, but no, that's not my piece. But my story is is um, it's kind of crazy, but I, I'd like to think it's inspirational. I've been an attorney for 37 and a half years. Um, actually 37 years, what am I saying? 37 and a half. And I have three adult sons. My oldest son is autistic and uh, he's in a program in Kentucky. So I went to law school because I wanted to do something. It wasn't that I had a passion for being a lawyer, although I've had a fabulous career. I I have no complaints about that. And I really do enjoy my job. I'm lucky enough to be in-house counsel um, for a large hospital system and work with wonderful people, but it's never been my real passion. Um, On the side, for my whole life, I've been drawing. Every time I had a pen in my hand, you know, I'd just be mindlessly drawing abstract designs. And I used to call them doodles. And during the pandemic, I began working from home and um, still working from home in my law job. I'm still practicing full time. And I was attending a deposition via Zoom and just listening in and drawing as usual. And I decided this was February of 2021, decided I was going to buy some paint pens and some art paper. I figured as long as I'm drawing, I might as well make them look pretty. And so I did that and um, I made a few pieces and showed my husband and he suggested that I start selling them. And, you know, at first I thought, well, that's crazy. I have no training as an artist. My sixth grade teacher told me I had no talent. So after that, I never took another art class. And, but I finally did in, in October of 2021, um, set up my website, started an Instagram account. And in November, 2021, I was invited by a gallery in London to come exhibit in March of 2022. At first I thought it was a scam. Like how could somebody be reaching out to me to do this? But sure enough, it was real deal. And um, in the past two years, uh, I've been invited and have exhibited in two different galleries, three times in New York, the gallery in London, Madrid, Innsbruck, um, three times in Miami. And it's been an incredible journey. Um, I love doing it. It's the other side of my brain. And I've even now branched out to start painting which has been a lot of fun. And I never thought I could paint, but I'm doing abstract paintings as well. So the other 
side of me, um, not that I don't have enough to do in my life, is I <laughs> right. for helping women in midlife. And the story really began with my childhood and my mother. When I was uh, 15 years old, my older sister went to college and my mother went to bed for six weeks, like literally did not move for six weeks. And it was very scary for me, obviously. I was, you know, I was the younger sister. And my mother was a stay-at-home mom, brilliant woman, college educated, but never allowed by my father or her father to work. And this was back in the, you know, the 70s. So it was a different time. But it was a very powerful lesson to me to watch her go through this horrific depression to the point where she wouldn't even talk to me for some a few days. Um, and I was only, I was in high school. And I decided then that I was never going to be like her. I was going to, you know, always work, always have something to do, always have a job, never let a man tell me that I couldn't do anything. And so I've always wanted to help women at that empty nest stage, that sort of midlife, I don't want to say crisis, but the time when you it start is. back, yeah, and and thinking about, well, what do I really want to do with my life? What have I put aside? for my kids. Maybe I've, I've been in a profession that's really not my passion. And, um, and so I sort of feel like this is now dedicated to my mother, honestly, that I want to write the ship, so to speak, you know, in, in honor of her. And so I became certified as a high performance coach um, a few months ago through Brendan Burchard's program. And so now I have a great curriculum to use and I've gone through the high performance coaching um, myself as a client. So I know how it works, but I want to use it as a tool to help women in midlife, you know, get, get clear on, you know, on themselves, their purpose, um, get the courage to start something new, to figure out sort of what's their thing. I was talking with a client last night and we were talking about what she wants to do with the rest of her life and talking about how, you know, you can say, oh, I want to do this or I want to do that, but you've never done it before. But then sitting back and thinking, well, what is what is your real thing? What drives you? What have what would be fun for you? What would be exciting? And and really digging deep and finding that out. And it was really interesting with her because she had thought at the beginning when we started working together that something was something she wanted to do. But in going through it, she realized, no, there's something else that really excites me. And this is what I'm going to do now. And so that's why I decided to, in addition to my art, in addition to my law job, help women through this coaching program. That's that's really an amazing story. And I can see how it's helped you in that art was just something that was always a part of you but now it is it's a larger part of of your life and it's it, it art is such an expressive thing and it's so personal it, it's kind of like coaching in some ways where it's it it too is really personal for you and that um you're helping other women probably professional women i would assume be able to take a step back and and really move forward in the direction that lights them up because right. you know we reach this point in our lives where we've raised our kids and we've done all the things and we've had careers and and now what <laughs> you know? exactly and and you know definitely not sitting on the couch just waiting for the end to come and, you know, I really feel very personally that, um, you know, we have one life and it's a great gift and why not maximize it? Nobody knows how much time they're given. Nobody knows how long it's going to be. Um, but the key is to decide, okay, I'm, I'm going to make the most of it. I'm going to, you know, the gift I've been given of having a life. I'm going to make use of it the best way I can. And so, yeah, I think um, I think it's good to be able to, you know, hopefully at the end say, 
I did the things that I really wanted to do. And I followed my intuition. I followed my gut. And, you know, not maybe it's not always going to work out. But, you know, having the courage to try. We're all gifted with something. Exactly. And, and we're sent here to share it. And I think there's an awakening happening among women primarily, but some guys too, but where they're just like, we're reaching our later years and, and realizing, Hey, I wasn't born to be an attorney. I wasn't <laughs> born to sell real estate. I was really born to do this. Mm -hmm. And, and in my doing this, whatever this is, I contribute to making the whole world better. Right. And some it, it's usually a small way it's, it doesn't have to be really big but it's a key piece to to bringing the rest of the world back into alignment and and making it better for all of us we've gone along with this agenda that's been out there it's mostly masculine and women were just supposed to go along with it and raise the kids and stay home and by the time you were 40 you were done your life was pretty much over you could go be on the social committee of whatever <laughs> thing your husband was doing. And he was pretty much done with you too. I mean, that <laughs> it's like the sad truth of most relationships, at least back in the seventies and eighties, that's when right. divorces were like so rampant. It was usually women in their forties were losing their husbands in droves. And these women had no clue what to do next. Um, it and no was, money usually too. Yep. Yep. It, it was awful. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm sorry. It just like that, that bothers me a lot yeah. that it happened, but it did happen. And women now, you know, you, you hit 40 and 50 and it's like, I, I'm, I'm just hitting my stride. I, I'm waking up. I know what I want to do. And it's, it's really exciting. I'm 63 and I feel like, I feel like a kid again. It's like, there's so much potential and, and so many great things happening and it, it's fun to be part of it. Yeah. I, I'm 62. So I'm right there with you. And, and I think your, your comment about bringing the world into alignment is, is so apt because I really believe that there is a purpose for us to be here. And that is sort of, we, like I said, we've been given this gift of life. And I think part of it is to figure out what it is, what can we leave behind? And, you know, and I think for women in particular, um, I have sons and they're watching and they're my, one of my sons is married. His wife is watching. If you have daughters, they're watching too. And if they see that, first of all, mom's fine after they leave the nest. Not that we don't miss our kids. I, I love my kids and you know, yeah. step ends with them, but that your whole life isn't just wrapped up in them. And that they see that you have so much more to give in your life and so much more to do and are really excited to do it. Yeah. And there's, there's options, right? Women have options now that they have never had. I have a daughter who's 41 and a daughter who's 19. The 19 year old, man, should I be 19 again at this time? <laughs> it's just yeah, like, I, yeah. she, she can do anything and she doesn't have to be locked into. Um, when our moms were young, they had to go to college to find a husband. That was the yeah. only reason women went to college. Very few of them went to actually have a career because most of them didn't have careers, right. but they found husbands. And then now most people that go to college are women, right? Guys now, aren't I'm, going to college. I'm sorry. No, you're absolutely right. That's it, the, 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 there's been a huge shift for women. And, and the career possibilities are endless. Yeah. I, I really admire you that you are an attorney because in that day and age, 
when you became an attorney, it was pretty rare. Yeah, there there weren't as there were definitely a lot of women in my class, but it wasn't. I graduated from law school in 1986, but it was still different when you started out as a lawyer. And in terms of the perception that you were going to go, if you were married, you're going to go and have babies, you're, you're going to be put on a totally different career track. And, and I actually had a very interesting experience as a lawyer because um, I started my career as a prosecutor. And then when my oldest son was born and diagnosed with autism, I, I could not work full time because I had to take him to therapy. And I was lucky enough uh, to work for Janet Reno, who was the then the state attorney in Miami. And she offered me a part-time position, which was unheard of for attorneys. And later on, and I, I worked there, and I ended up um, and a few years later in a law firm um, that also I went for the interview for a full-time position. It was a national law firm. And I said, I'm sorry, I can't work full time. I have to take my son to therapy in the afternoon. I need to leave like at three to go pick him up and take him. And they hired me. Not only did they hire me, but I became the first part time partner in the history of the firm, which was really an amazing experience. It said more about the firm, frankly, than it did about me. But I feel like, you know, those were the days that doors started to open for women, opportunities start to open. You could still have a career, even if you had to be part time, you could still be a lawyer, you could still do things and and write your path um, along the way. So we're in we're in exciting times now for that. I, I couldn't agree with you more. I, and that's really amazing that those doors opened for you and that you were kind of a pioneered the opportunities. And I think the whole coming home for COVID thing, mm -hmm. that just made, it really transformed the work world in a way that I don't think we'll fully recognize for a few more years yet. Mm -hmm. But I know a lot of professional women who used to have to get up and go to work and sit in the office and then come home and then have a life at home um, are now they, they work from home. And when you work from home, it gives you so much more um, ability to integrate your work and your life together because you're not having to commute. And uh, I think Zoom has been a great thing for that. <laughs> oh, Zoom is amazing. Zoom is absolutely amazing on so many levels. I mean, not just work-wise. And it's true. You're right, because you spend time in the car that if you want to do something else, then when you're done with your work day, you can just, you know, close that computer, close that book and go do like for me when I'm done at the end of the day, I might go sit at my art table and start working on art because I have a, you know, takes me 10 seconds <laughs> to get from my work desk to my art desk. So yes, it opened up huge opportunities and huge opportunities just for connection in general and opportunities to network with people and see people and communicate where you're not just talking on the phone, where you actually see the person. And what an amazing, amazing, amazing technology that came just in time with COVID. Yeah, I'd been using Zoom a little bit before COVID, but it was like COVID hit and everybody knew how to use Zoom. <laughs> exactly. So as far as your coaching goes, because really that's what we're talking about. <laughs> I know that you offer a, a guide. It's called the five key areas for a best second half to maximize the second half of your life. Mm -hmm. Do you want to talk about that a little bit? Well, it's really a, just a guide for people who might be interested in the coaching um, to to look at and, and you know, look at the areas on there and sort of take a look at their life and go through it and see if it's something that maybe resonates with them so that they might be interested in, you know, in further going further with the coaching. Very good. Very good. And where can they find that? 
Well, actually, I'm in the process of creating my website. So if anyone is interested in it, they just need to send me an email to julie at julie was, J-U-L-I-E-W-A-A-S, that's S in the sam, uh, dot com. And it's two A's, one S. I Everybody messes that up, including me sometimes. <laughs> But yeah, Julia, juliewass.com. Just send me an email saying I'd like the guide and I'd be happy to send it to them. I'm hoping in the next couple of weeks to have my website up and running where it'll be easier for folks to to get a hold of it. Um, but that's the, the best place to find it. Because this isn't going to um, actually air until December, um, I would presume your website will be up. Do you know what the domain name is going to be yeah. already? Yeah going to be www.juliewass.com okay so we'll be sure to put that in the show notes too and perfect when yeah your website and the podcast episode will drop all at the same time <laughs> that's that sounds fabulous because yes it, it'll be ready by then i'm hoping in the next like month it'll be all all ready to go and, and how there'll are be you information then in the on the website how are you working with people is it one-on-one -on -one? Are you thinking you're going to do group um, coaching? Yes. Actually, I um, I originally thought I would just do one-on-one, -on -one, but and I love the one-on-one, -on -one, but it doesn't necessarily make a lot of sense time-wise. Um, I do have a one-on-one -on -one program. It's 14 weeks, um, and it's, you know, once a week, 60 minutes. Uh, it includes, you know, the one-on-one the -on -one with me the whole time. I also provide... Um, my clients with a journal because I, I think journaling every day is extremely important. Uh, it's amazing what turns up when you start writing every single day. And, you know, for folks who've never done it before, you know, I can provide them with journal prompts, also some guided meditations, I think also. And I also focus on affirmations every day and gratitude every day. So that's what the coaching program involves aside from the curriculum that I have. Uh, but I'm also going to start in January group coaching. Uh, what I'd like to do is have a couple of groups of women. I don't want it any larger than six so that everybody can really dig in and get to know each other and have an opportunity to contribute. I think when groups get too big, you know, especially if you're someone that might be res reticent to, you know, speak up, um, you're going to just sit there and maybe not necessarily get the most out of it. So the the group coaching program is going to be similar. It'll also be 14 weeks. It'll be 12 weeks of group. And then everybody would get a two sessions with me one-on-one -on -one for 60 minutes. Um, and then the group coaching would probably be, I'm planning it to be 75 minutes so that we really have an opportunity for everybody to contribute. Because the, the method of the coaching is, I don't tell anybody what to do. It's through the right type of questions to dig out the information, dig out what's really in your heart and what your feelings and, and, you know, to get that clarity. So it's, it's a wonderful opportunity for everybody to do that. So that's why I'm going to do both the one-on-one the -on -one and the group coaching. I think that's amazing. I, I know from personal experience that the magic really does happen in groups. Mm -hmm. It's there's, there's some dynamic that when you're in a group of women, if, and small cohorts are really great for this, that you just, you meet lifelong friends mm -hmm. and, and, and you have new partners that you can collaborate with. And, and we're, we're really moving into a time where it's less about competition and more about cooperation, which to me is women are their very best. You compete with yourself to right. be your the best you can be and, and show up authentic to yourself and the best you can be. And so you can push your sisters up because they're, they're coming to, they're bringing what they have, their special gift. And as we all come together, we can lift each other up. And that is what makes the world a better place. Oh, I couldn't agree more. And I think you're right about the group because the dynamic is such that you know, when some when one person starts opening up, you feel more comfortable opening up yourself mm -hmm. that you might feel intimidated in the one on one situation. And and I failed to mention that it was going to be on Zoom. 
So everybody, thank, thank goodness for Zoom, you yeah. know, it doesn't matter where they are in the world. Um, we can all come together and either locally or, you know, whatever, but on Zoom and that way everybody gets to see each other and develop those relationships. And I think when you're in a situation where you're being vulnerable, it's a great opportunity to make those connections, make those friendships, you know, have somebody that you can turn to who's been with you as you were crying and talking about whatever that came up. Mm -hmm. And when you have more than one person, then it's not like so much about teaching as about um, collaborating and you know you, you never know who's going to come up with the, the next great idea and right. somebody might have a, a an answer to something or have has been through something that's similar and they have an experience that they can share that might impact this other person in a way that if it was just one-on-one -on -one, you didn't have that experience so you couldn't share and yeah I've I've seen it happen so many times <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think you're right. And it's even to the point where somebody might say, well, I'm interested in doing X. And it may have been something like, oh, my gosh, you know, the other person's thinking, wow, that's something I'd like to do, too. And it goes back to sort of like, what's your thing? And what what is something that's going to drive you? And maybe you get inspired because some people don't even know They They might be like, I, I was talking to someone the other day who was saying, yeah, when I retire, maybe I'll volunteer, maybe I'll work at the soup kitchen. And I said, it actually was a gentleman. He wanted to talk to me about his midlife experience. And, you know, and I said, well, is that something you've ever done? And he said, no. And I said, well, is it something that, are you just saying it because it sounds good that when you retire, you'll suddenly volunteer and that'll become a passion? And he's like, wow, I never thought about that. I said, maybe you should think about what is it that you really want to do that that's really in your heart that you've not had time to do instead, because you're more likely to stick with it. If it's something that's you're feeling more passionate about, if it's something that becomes just another job, well, is that really what you want to do? So it's a lot of, lot of, you know, so hearing other people talk about it in a group setting can provide people with just some ideas and that they might not have ever thought of. When you're talking about you know, people going and volunteering at the soup kitchen, this gentleman, it kind of reminded me of my dad who um, he's a retired Naval officer and he had a career in the aerospace industry and a couple other industries. And um, he, uh, he does volunteer sometimes at the soup kitchen around mm -hmm. the holidays but he he's an artist he decided oh, really? yeah wow. and he, he's exhibited his art it was in the phoenix um airport for a while wow <laughs> unusually <laughs> enough but um yeah it was like something totally different for him too and that's that's the beauty of it if even doing something totally different can just re-energize you and give you, you know, excite you to now move in a direction that you may not have thought of. And circles that of people that you might not have been introduced to. Right. Right. You know, right. I, I do believe that there's no coincidence that we meet people along the way who maybe send us in one direction or suggest things or introduce us to things or introduce us to other people. And that is all part of a greater plan. It's, it's not that, Oh, I, wow, what a coincidence. I ran into, you No, I don't think so. I think, I think very clearly that's why, you know, I, I want to make sure that I help other women go down that path and not just ignore the signs, so to speak. Yeah. And it's easy to ignore the signs. Absolutely. You don't have to anymore. <laughs> right. Right. So, Julie, what's the one thing you want to leave the audience with today? I want to leave the audience with the just the notion that women, life is not over when you're in your 40s, 50s, 60s or beyond, that you have a whole life to live 
that you have a purpose to being here and that you want to, you know, you should maximize every second of this life and that I am here to help you find your thing, find your courage, find your purpose, get clear and have just an amazing rocking second half. Amen to that, sister. (laughs) Thanks so much for joining me, Julie. Well, thank you for inviting me on. Thank you so much for tuning in to another empowering episode of the You World Order Showcase podcast. We hope you've enjoyed hearing from our incredible life, health, and transformational coaches who are making a profound impact on the world. Remember, change begins with you, and you have the power to transform your life and the lives of others. If you want to take that next step and unlock your true potential, visit thecoachesalchemist.com where you can find the three ways we can help you for free to spin your talent into gold with clarity, a system, and a plan. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you never miss an inspiring episode. And if you enjoyed today's show, we'd greatly appreciate it if you could leave us a review on your favorite podcast platform. Your feedback means the world to us and helps us reach more people with our positive message. Stay connected with us on social media for updates, behind the scenes content, and upcoming guest announcements. You can find us on Facebook at the U World Order or simply visit thecoachesalchemist.com.